Okay, this is still not resetting. Let's see. Okay, this may take a while. Uh, I can take the chance to ask. Okay, let me see. Maybe not. Okay, uh, I can take the chance to ask uh, to answer to try to answer one question if you have one. No question. Okay. Yeah, the question was if the first payload, the bank account payload, changed it, uh, every vendor's bank account or just the first one. It actually changes every vendor bank account. And it's a good question because it pointed me out something that uh, I just showed you that the vendor, the backdoor was modifying the vendor bank account and it was actually showing you the new bank account. But the backdoor could still show you the uh, legitimate bank account and still internally use the attacker's bank account. So it's really difficult to, to detect, okay? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me check if uh, I have it running. Okay, no, I can get, yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, the question was if in the first example that I changed the old hash value, uh, it was possible to detect that in the system log. What you would be able to detect that in the system log, uh, if you're doing it through the SAP system as I did, uh, like enter the, entering the SE16 transaction, accessing the database uh, table, entering to the back mode, you may get some information in the system log. If you do that directly to, through the database, you get no information at all. Okay, so. Uh, the system was uh, rebooted, and it was. It is supposed that this log on screen is now back there. So what we are going to try to do now is to uh, let me see. Uh, log Apache. Access. Okay. So this window here will be the uh, attacker's system in China um, or in Argentina, not to have uh, no hard feelings with China. Or, um, so now the legitimate users will uh, try to log into the system using his password. And it's there. Okay, so here the attacker system got a special HTTP request. And here is the client. Well, the client is in a bad format, but it's a minor bug. You have the username and the password that the user used to log in. Okay, so if he, sorry, if he, anyone logs in again, yeah, I'm making a mess here. Uh, anyone, uh, John, with the wrong password or whatever, just to show you, you'll get John passwords. Okay, so this basically means that an attacker could be receiving any SAP user's credentials from the time he, he wants to. Okay. There are, that's three demos running without problems. It's, something's going to happen today. Probably the, the, the ceiling is going to fall or something. So, which is the protection against this? Uh, it's actually not possible to protect against this from the SAP layer. We're going to get into that in, uh, I think, next slide. Yes, so in order to protect against this and to help customers be, try to detect this kind of threat, we developed the Onapsis Integrity Analyzer for SAP. So basically, what we're trying to do with this tool is to uh, like, try to help to uh, detect and, and prevent fraud, okay? Like this one. So this could happen in Vegas, so watch out with what you're doing tonight. Um, this tool will try to detect modifications in ABAP codes. You can download it, well, not yet. It's uh, upcoming. I hope to have it uh, running for next week as well. 
And it's only working, so far it's a proof of concept, it's only working for SAP with Oracle 10G implementations. It was developed by one of our guys, Jordan Santarcieri, and I kind of gave him some guidance on, on the tool, but the actual code was pretty much developed by him, so he gets a kudos for that. Um, why do you need this kind of tool? I mean, this or any kind of this approach? Because you cannot detect the bad order from inside the SAP system itself. This is just a basic concept. If your Windows system is backdoor, you cannot use that system to check if it's backdoor. So you cannot use the SAP system. What a not very security aware auditor will try to do is to check program's last modified date. I've seen this in auditing reports, a big for auditing reports. Uh, the backdoor can leave, I mean, because why? Because when you modify a program from the SAP system itself, it mod, if update is, if it updates the last modified date. Of course, if you are just accessing through a database, you can leave that field untouched, as we just did. And also, the program, the EVA program that you're running to check if this system is backdoor can also have been backdoor to hide the backdoor, okay? So it's like recursive. Um, so you cannot trust, you cannot rely into that. You may try to do this manually, but you should know that uh, there are hundreds of thousands SAP programs in a regular SAP installation, so this may get a bit, a bit difficult. And what the program does is really not technical, it's not rocket science at all. It, it connects to the database and performs a snapshot of sensitive, or actually of all, AVA programs. So it's, get it's getting a hash of each AVA program code and downloaded it to a local database. So then you can periodically make new, new snapshots and compare them if there is any kind of unauthorized modification. This is far from being perfect because it has some uh, weaknesses uh, or drawbacks, like uh, you have to do this, for example, the first day you install the SAP system because uh, if you do it now, you don't know if it it's has been backdoor before. Uh, but what you are planning to do is to release some signatures for baseline installations so you can compare against that, but it's going to take a while. And it's also important to track, node, track a sub nodes installation because they can modify AVA programs and they are not a backdoor. So uh, it's, it's difficult to, to manage. The idea is that it will help you to detect some suspicious modifications and you should do a further investigation into that. So I'm going to show you how the tool looks like. Uh, no, this one, this one. Okay. So just to make it faster, uh, I'm going to, I have already taken a snapshot of one of the system before we backdoored the, the business module. And now I'm going to take a new snapshot so I had to connect to the database. You specify the Oracle instance ID, the user you want to use to connect. Uh, yeah, you can, if you don't use custom scan, it will make a signature of all, all the existing AVA programs in the database. Okay, so it's going to take too long. What you're going to do use a custom scan to scan only for, and to snapshot only some uh, small subsets. So I load this file, and you have to specify where do you want to put the output. So this will be the snapshot uh, post uh, backdoor demo DB. So you save it. You can uh, check connection to see if everything's working. Everything seems fine. You can proceed with your snapshot. So you run this, and it will connect to the database, get a SHA-1, I think it was, a hash, and save it to your local machine. So what you should do from time to time is to compare snapshots. So you go here, and you load the snapshot uh, that you did before. So I have the one before the backdoor somewhere, uh, pre-backdoor. And now I'm going to load the post backdoor demo file. So I hit compare, and we'll see that the uh, business module that we modify on the database was detected to have different signatures, okay? So then you have to make your investigations around uh, what happened with that program, okay? 
So it can tell you if there are uh, difference in compiled programs, in miss, there are missing programs, uh, there is any subnode related to this program, so you can try to think that maybe it was a subnode, but it is that uh, you can do this with, with the tool. Oh, like that. Okay. So, summing up. Also, when I did this presentation, there was like some kind of concern that, or, or misconsiderations that this was an SAP vulnerability. This is actually not an SAP vulnerability. I mean, the backdoor threat affects every information system, so it's not SAP related specifically. What we have just shown is that it also affects SAP systems. And also, it's important to, to realize that once an attacker has full controls, a full control of a system, it's really, really difficult to restrict his activities, okay? So SAP is not the exception in this sense. It will be the same as saying that Microsoft, because uh, it's, it's flown, Windows is flown, because once you are administrator, you can create a new administrator, okay? So uh, that's not how, how it is. I hope that you have got a clear idea that it's possible to directly modify AVA programs in production without going through the transport mechanism. As you have seen, backdoors uh, can have really devastating impacts over business. I mean, you can make, uh, an attacker can make sabotage attacks just to mix the information. Uh, he can do fraud attacks to change bank accounts and, and detour money. Don't forget that the, the direct uh, database access is not the only attack vector. The attack can come from several places and exploit these trust relationships. Someone doing this, it's really not about having fun with your SAP system. It's probably something else. You can try out Internet Analyzer and give us your, uh, give us your feedback. It's just free tool, so uh, probably they have some improvements to be made on it. Thinking about protection, I think that the best cost-effective protection is to minimize the probability of the initial compromise. Okay? Once you are compromised, it's really difficult to try to keep running secure. So the best choice is, is to try to block the first attempt. So you should implement some automated controls and do periodical uh, bull assessment, pen test, security audits of your entire SAP platform. This is also important, something important I want to stress is that usually when you get an audit of your company's SAP system, auditors just look at the production system and maybe the production client. Uh, we have found most of the time that it's possible to attack the development system that is usually less, uh, like, uh, with we, uh, weaker security settings, and then jump to the production system. So you should analyze every SAP system in your network, not just production. And yeah, I think that's the only system of choice. There have been some controversy about this talk, but I think that it's something that we should analyze objectively and responsibly, so uh, just showing that this is possible and uh, someone could be actually exploiting this. So we have to deal with that. So we have like, yeah, 10 minutes for questions. Okay, the question was, uh, if you have your SAP system updated to every, every single security node that is available, are you still in danger of a SAP backdoor? I have to say that yes. Uh, not because, uh, I mean, you, you definitely reduce the attack surface, but there are human errors like, uh, you have to be really, it's not, security nodes, for example, doesn't affect or that are not related with segregation of duties issues. So if you have a user who, has, who can do more things that he should do, he can install the backdoor. If he can exploit the operating system, a unpatched Windows box, he can get to the database. He may be able to exploit the database. So it's like uh, you have to cover all the weak links. Yeah. You, anyway, you should do that. You should install every SAP node, but uh, it's not a foolproof uh, concept. Sorry? The tool. The tool, the backdoor installer? Yeah. Yeah. The, the code already yeah. No, no.